good thinking chair. I can be a collector of information for other people in the church. God has given me the ability to uh, have like a, a mental itch that I have to scratch until I got like this pile of information and I can bring that information back to the people in my life. Try to practice generosity as a way to balance out the part of me that's stingy. I'm really interested in the, the way to make choices that bring flourishing to life. A wise choice that doesn't cost too much energy and is actually the right choice. That is something that, that opened up my eyes to the, to the beauty of the observer. Hey, welcome to Sandals Church. My name is Jeff. Welcome to Sandals Church Online. My name is Jeff. I'm the online campus pastor. That was our friend Miles who has the core style five on the Enneagram. Now, if you just joined us, we are in a series called You. And what we are doing is helping you to discover that you are made in the image of God. But doing that with the tool of the Enneagram with a biblical lens. In fact, if you if, if you can't tell there's something something going on behind me, there's some people behind me, and, and those people are, are, are some local Sandals Church family, friends, and staff getting ready to go into the studio to hear from our lead pastor, Matt Brown, which you will be hearing from in a minute as well. If this is your first time hanging out with us, let us know by downloading the Sandals Church app and getting connected. You can go to sandalschurch.com slash app or from your app store. As a church, we believe in prayer. It's prayer that has the power to turn things around in our life. We all need prayer and the people in our lives need prayer. That's why this Sunday after our 8, 15 a.m. service, I will be reading your comments and praying for you live on our Sandals Church Facebook page. Be sure to join me around 9, 15 a.m. Pacific Standard Time as I take your prayer requests up to the Lord. I hope to see you and read you there. I want to grab someone right now and ask them about this series and how they've been enjoying it. This is Anissa. Anissa, I got a question for you. Have yes. you have you been hanging out with our series so far? Yes. Okay, give me give me probably one of your biggest takeaways from Pastor Matt's sermon. I think my biggest takeaway from the sermon would be um, I feel really seen. Yeah. And better understood. Yeah. In my small group, I feel like I can understand them better, and that allows me to show them so much more grace. Come on now, that is yes. what I'm talking about. Hey, thank you so much, Alyssa. Hope you enjoy. Hope you enjoy the message today. Man, what is a great about Alyssa? It's not only has she been impacted by this series, but so many people all over the world have been impacted. We have seen thousands of people at our local campuses, at our St. Louis Church, anywhere locations and online grow in their faith with Christ because of this series. In fact, I received a text message from my friend Matt in Australia, and he said, hey, Jeff, I've been watching the Enneagram series, and man, it's so awesome to discover uh, who I am through Christ. And then he actually says this as well. He says, um, he says, absolutely, whether he's talking about, Pastor Matt, whether he's talking about your type or not, you're always being equipped either way. I love that. I want you to know that, that not only here locally, but all over the world, God is impacting lives through this series. Hey, if you give to Sandals Church, you have made it possible for, for Alyssa and Matt and thousands to be transformed by Christ and the message that they are receiving. Lives are being transformed. People are understanding that they're made for more and that they're made in the image of Christ. If you've never given and you want to try it today for the first time, all you have to do is go to give.sc or give on a Sandals Church app. Thanks so much for impacting so many lives. Okay. Let's welcome our lead pastor, Matt Brown, as we continue in our series, a series called You. Hey guys, welcome to Sandals Church. I'm so glad you are here with us today. We are in this series called You. And I want you to know whether you've been at Sandals for a long time or today is your first time, we're in a series called You. Listen to me, because God loves you. So oftentimes we, we lose ourselves in the process of our religious exercise. Or some of you, you've been to church and, and you've fallen away from church because you've been hurt. I want you to know today that God loves you. And God is calling you today to two things. Number one, God is calling you to himself. And listen to me, friends. God is calling you to your true self. Colossians says that your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And this series is about you finding the real Real you. In a day and age when the currency in America and around the world is identity, God wants to reveal to you your spiritual identity that can only be found in Him. 
And so today we're gonna look at a personality style that oftentimes gets a bad rap. Listen, if you're a five, you're an observer, uh, maybe you kind of look at life from outside the window, we love you and God loves you and God has an incredible conversation with an observer, one of the most famous people in the Bible and his name is Nicodemus. So we're gonna turn to one of the most famous passages of scriptures, and I hope today I blow your mind at how Jesus, listen to this, is willing to reach us where we are, knowing our personality, knowing our fears, knowing our concerns, but yet he reaches out to Nicodemus. And listen to me, fives, it's with you that we get the most famous Bible verse of all time. All time because of you. Because God doesn't want you just to be an observer. He wants you to become a participant in the kingdom of God. So in John chapter three, verses one through 16, it says there was a man named Nicodemus. Especially if you're high five, I want you to know the Bible is written about real places and real people. These are not fictitious things. These are not myths. They name real cities that we know where they are. And they name real people who lived real lives. He was a Jewish religious leader. He's famous. People knew about him. And he was a Pharisee, okay? He would have been a conservative Jewish leader. But he has concerns about Jesus. And so after dark, one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, he said, listen to this. We all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. Here's the thing, if you're a doubter today, if you're far from God today, whether you're a Hindu, a Muslim, or an atheist, or just a skeptic, no other religious leader in the history of the world has as many miracles attested to him as Jesus. As Jesus. Matter of fact, if you're Muslim today, listen, I love you, but it is not for 150 years that Muslims attest miracles to Muhammad until after his death. The Quran does not state that he did any miracles. The eyewitnesses of Jesus said both those who loved him and hated him said he did miracles. Incredible things that could not be explained. And Nicodemus says, I cannot explain you, but I want to understand you. And Jesus says, I tell you the truth. Man, wouldn't that be nice if people just spoke the truth today? Instead of their truth or a shady truth or the shadow truth, it's just the truth. Unless you are born again, listen to me, friend, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You see, your eyes don't work. They cannot see spiritual things. They can see physical miracles, but they still confuse you. Some of you, man, you've seen God do great things, but you're still far apart from God. What do you mean, exclaimed Nicodemus? He said, how can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? And Jesus replied, I assure you, no one, that's not you, that's not me, not the Pope, not your grandma. No one can enter the kingdom of God without being born, listen to me, of water and the spirit. Okay, when you were born, okay, and your mama, your biological mama, amen, when she birthed you, I know that was a little political, but that was real, that's truth. <laughs> when she birthed you, water broke. Water broke so you could come out and ride the waves of life, amen? <laughs> amen. And I remember when we, when we had our first baby, we, like I participated, right, you know? But when our first daughter came out, Madison, we were in Cocos. We were getting ready to order. And there was a couple times when my wife said, I think maybe my water broke. Let me tell you something, ladies. You know, you know, it's a, it's a hose from heaven and it just <laughs> pours out. And we watered that entire Cocos restaurant and I just apologize on the way out. It was a lot of liquid. I was not prepared for any of that. <laughs> but you don't remember it, but that happened when you were born. And let me tell you something. If you're born again, something happens. You're different than you were before. And some of you who call yourself Christians, if you've never become different, then Jesus has not made a difference in your life and you don't know Jesus, the word of life. Without being born of water and the spirit, humans can, can only rep reproduce human life but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. Don't be surprised when I say, Jesus says, you must be born again. He says the wind blows wherever it wants. In Hebrew, the same word for wind and spirit is ruach. And so Jesus knows that Nicodemus understands what he's saying. He says, you know the ruach of the wind, you need to know ruach, the spirit of God. 
Just as you can hear the wind, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going, so you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. How are these things possible, Nicodemus asked. And Jesus said, listen to me, fives, you're smart, you're brilliant, but you, you, you're not smart enough to get into heaven. You can't get into heaven with here. It's got to come from here. Some of you, you want to understand God with your mind. Good luck. That's like trying to empty the ocean with a Dixie cup. Your mind might be bigger than mine, but it's not big enough for God. He said, you're a respected Jewish teacher, and yet you don't understand these things. You see, just because somebody has PhD, okay, behind their name, it might just mean dummy. That's all it might mean. <laughs> That's it. Okay? Okay? I don't care what your degrees are, you're not smart enough for God. He says, I assure you, we tell you what we know and have seen, and yet you won't believe our testimony. But if you don't believe me when I tell you about earthly things, listen to this, how can you possibly believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ever gone to heaven and returned. Captain Kirk went to space this week. Did anybody hear about that? Yeah. Now, Captain Kirk was a big deal in my generation. He changed my life. He invented cell phones before cell phones were cell phones. Go back and watch it. But you know all he did was he barely got into space. We're just beginning to understand the heavens. Do you understand what they are now saying about the heavens? This is what they say. The heavens cannot be measured. And oh, by the way, it's growing. It's growing. Some of you guys, well, I just believe in science. You know what, scientists, they don't know why I can hold this microphone in my hand. Because the atoms that are moving around in this microphone and my hand, it makes no scientific sense why I can do this. And some of you are like, well, they don't know why. Let me tell you why. Because God has said for these atoms to work together. God has placed molecules where they are. They don't understand why things work together. The Bible says because they have been commanded to by the God of the heavens. He says, but the son of man has come down from heaven. And as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, you see the people of Israel had sinned greatly against God. They had turned their back on the God who saved them, the God who redeemed them, the God who brought them out of slavery. And they had turned to false gods. And so Moses held up a snake because they were being attacked by a swarm of poisonous snakes in the desert. And Moses said, if you look at this snake made by me, you'll be saved. And people did, and they were saved. And so Jesus is saying, just like Moses held up that snake, God is holding me up. And if you wanna be saved, you gotta look to me. So the son of man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. Listen to me, friend, what makes your life so special that you deserve eternal life? We live in a world today where everybody's gonna live forever, amen? Why? Why? You can't even control whether you live on this earth for 80 years. How on earth do you believe that you're gonna live forever if you can't live here for as long as you want to? You're not in control here and you're not in control there. Jesus is in control of both. He says this, for this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but listen to this, but have eternal life. There is one way to be saved, and it's not by observing Jesus, my fives, it's by believing in Jesus. If you're a five today, I want you to know that I love you and I appreciate you and I respect you and we need more of you because you reflect God's wisdom. You reflect God's wisdom. Colossians 3.16 says this, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Listen to me, fives. You represent the wisdom of God. Some of you, you say, well, who is God? What is God? Here's what we know from the scriptures. Listen to me, fives. This will blow your mind. God is the eternal, omniscient, unembodied mind. He's the unmoved mover, he is the thought behind every thought process. He's an eternal being that exists in a spiritual mind. And he comes to us in the physical form as Jesus. And that's how we're saved. 
So you reflect God's wisdom. Here's the challenge, your underlying emotion. We're moving from shame of the two, of the three and the four, and we're moving to the underlying emotion of the five and the six and the seven. And let me tell you something, friends, you know why some of you still don't come to church? Because you're living by fear and not faith. The underlying emotion is fear. Now the five, six, and seven, they all experience fear in very different ways. The five is afraid of not having enough, not knowing enough, or not being enough. Man, let me tell you something. God is enough, and he loves you today. What motivates, what drives a five? To gain knowledge, to gain knowledge. You wanna be smarter, you care, you wanna know the facts. Man, you've already figured out, you know, where in Wuhan the virus came from. You got a graph and a chart and you know, you know. And the rest of us are just confused by your graphs and charts and more clueless now than we were before you started explaining. <laughs> but you wanna uncover the truth, right? Because like Jesus, you believe the truth sets us free. And amen and thank God for you. Thank God for you. And here's what you avoid at all cost, incompetence. Good Lord, is there enough incompetence in the world today? <laughs> hug a five, they don't want you to hug them, but just give them an air high five. They don't want you to touch them, just, hey. <laughs> I was at the hotel this week trying to work on this sermon and the Wi-Fi doesn't work. And you know what you need when Wi-Fi doesn't work? You need five because they understand how it works. They know what it does. So I called the hotel, I said, I need help. ASAP, now stat. God's people are waiting on this message. <laughs> Listen to me, fives, can I get an amen? They sent a maintenance worker. And if you don't understand what that is, the next time your car breaks down, walk into an Apple store and tell them, I would like a techie to help fix my car. That's dumb, that's incompetence. You don't send a maintenance worker for a Wi-Fi. We should have put an all out call for a 12 year old, amen? In comes Bob. Bob's got to be in his mid-70s. I'm like, good God, this is not what we need unless you have a 12-year-old maintenance worker. This is not going to help. Bob comes in, hey, how can I help? I was like, Bob, we're in trouble. And Bob said, did you try turning it off and on? Yes, Bob, I did. Go figure, Bob and I couldn't fix the problem. It was frustrating. Man, there's incompetence everywhere, right? I remember one time I was in a Carl's Jr. drive-thru and I ordered a medium-sized milkshake. And the gal said, I'm sorry, sir, milkshakes only come in one size. So I'm just curious, what size cup would that one size milkshake come in? She said, that'd be a medium, sir. <laughs> well, can I just have the one size medium milkshake that I ordered in the beginning? But let's be honest, we gotta be nicer to these people. Thank God somebody's working, giving us our food, amen? amen? Amen. You're all irritated, go get a job, man. You work, you serve the food. Somebody's gotta do it. So when healthy, when you are healthy. Observers, listen to me, God bless you. You have the ability to remain calm and focused. You don't want me in an emergency. We're going down, this is over, we're all gonna die. I was taken out of Dallas, man. Now people say God loves Texas, but I think he hates the weather in Texas. Every time I've flown out of Dallas, man, it's just like the devil is in the air. <laughs> you ever been, you've been in Dallas? Oh my gosh. So we're sitting on the runway, every flight's canceled, nobody's going anywhere. It's pandemonium, people are freaking out. And we're sitting on the runway and he says, yeah, there's a thunderstorm. I'm like, of course. And he says, you know, but we think we're gonna get out and we take off and, and you know a five, he's the airline pilot. He's telling us this is exactly what's gonna happen. Can you imagine if I was your pilot? I'd be, okay, everybody pray, get, take your seatbelt off, get on your knees. Everybody get on your knees. You better start praying. I don't know if we're gonna make it. I'm punching the flight attendant, bam, bam, come on. And he's just calmly, you know, we're experiencing some slight turbulence and if we lose a little altitude, that's okay. This plane is safe and I've got control. Thank God for the fives, amen? 
because I'd had my parachute jumping out the plane. <laughs> and he got us, man. He knew exactly where we were going. He knew, he knew everything. He informed us. You know, but he, he's on the other side of the door. He didn't want to come out and hug us. He wants to talk to us through the, through the microphone. <laughs> Praise God for the fives. You know, if you, if you need brain surgery, you want a five. Because I'm a three. I'm not going to do it. I'm like, you're going to die. I can't have that on my record, right? <laughs> I only operate on patients where I can win, baby. This is grim. But that's fives, man. They are competent and calm. Calm. Okay? That's when they're healthy. That's what you want. Everybody, chill. Because I'm smarter than the rest of you. Not me, fives. Next. Observers are often very thoughtful. And their knowledge, listen to this, in multiple areas make them incredibly perceptive. And ladies, attractive. You're like, ooh, I got a smart guy. I got a smart guy. Ladies, you want to know why you're so attracted to fives? Because men don't read. Did you know that? Somebody asked me, why'd you put Lisa Bevere on the front of your book? I said, because men don't buy books. They don't. Guys, if you're single today and you want a girlfriend, just go to Starbucks and open a book. They're just going to stop. <laughs> ladies, ladies, circle up. There's a man reading a book. Excuse me, sir, you can read? <laughs> Why, yes, I can. I'm a five. But they're incredibly insightful, observant. If a five buy buys you a gift, they thought about it for like six months, researched it, figured it out. They know exactly how bizarre you are. <laughs> if I buy you a gift, it's last minute. I'm just looking around the house. What, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? <laughs> but they're observant. They see you, listen to me, they get you. There's a reason Nicodemus came to the house of Jesus. He said, I can see that you are a man of God. Isn't that interesting? I see, I, I'm observing you and you're the real deal. Not everybody who's religious is the real deal, but Jesus was. And Nicodemus picked up on this, insightful, and observant. Listen to this. And they have a desire. They have a desire that the world will be less chaotic and more organized. And some of you guys are just so afraid. People say, Pastor, I'm just so worried. I'm like, what are you worried about? I'm worried about when these cars are going to drive themselves. Be at peace, my friend. Those cars are designed by fives. They will be a better driver than you. <laughs> okay? Your computer ain't going to go, oh, I dropped a burger. <laughs> They're not distracted. They're designed by fives. They do what they're supposed to do. They're gonna maintain the normal distance between cars. There's no computer gonna be like, get out of the way, get out of the way. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny if one day our cars talk smack to each other on the road? A Mercedes is like Toyota. <laughs> so listen to me. When you're at your best, you are brilliant. You are amazing. You are smarter and wiser than the rest of us. You have information that we just don't have. But when you begin to shift and you move away from your God-given giftedness and you shift to unhealth, listen to me, observers can shift from being observant to detached. You stop watching us because you stop caring. You're just like incompetent, incompetent, incompetent. That's why you're not in small group. You're like, these people are all crazy. Yeah, because we don't have enough fives in small group. We need you guys in there. Uh, do you guys realize that for six weeks we have not done the discussion questions once? <laughs> Nobody else knows that. You can put a gra graph and a chart together. Emily, you've been 17% to small group this year. <laughs> Fred, you've been 13%. I don't even know who you are. You've never been to group. And the rest of us are like, I always go to group. God's my priority. Well, the chart says no. But what happens is, here's what you do. You just say people are too risky. How scary is that, that you feel like the internet is safer than a relationship? You're more interested as a parent in the manual, the operational manual for your car than you are the children you bought the car for. You see, people aren't always easy to read. People aren't always easy to understand. 
And if you're not careful, instead of coming to Jesus' house at midnight, you just won't come at all. And you'll just pull away. An observer needs to avoid, their, their need to avoid incompetence can cause them, listen, to withdraw completely from the world around them and disappear into their heads. Fives, we need you. God created you. You are a blessing to us. If you're raising a little five, listen to me. Fives act in, not out. I've never acted in a day in my life. Okay, I find out how I'm feeling after the words come out of my mouth. And we have a five in our home. And my passion and my energy, let's call it maybe slightly aggression, and I'm getting frustrated because he's not responding instantaneously with me. It's because that's not how God made him. God made me a spaz. God made him wise. Listen to this, friends. Shocker. He actually wants to think about what he says before he says it. I'm like, what is this? But listen to me, fives, just like all of us, God made you wise but you have sin, we all do. And you might not agree with this, but I wanna challenge you to pray about it because this sin is real. It's a sin of greed. And let me just, maybe, maybe that doesn't resonate with you. Maybe the word stinginess helps. You just don't automatically share, you withhold it in because your, your fear is you don't have enough time, enough energy, right? So you withhold your time. And if you love a five, they need their own time. But listen to me, fives, we need some of your time. God has asked for some of your time. He gave you six days. He wants one. You had six days to get what you needed done, done. And you gotta do this. If you're a five, when you come home from work, maybe take, take a, just a moment and sit in the garage, sit in the driveway and decompress because if you have little ones, they need you. And whatever... Uh, spouse is at home with them all day long. They need you because they've been with terrorists all day long. Pooping, COVID filled, bipolar, little terrorists. And you need to congratulate them that nobody died today, amen? Nobody died. But you're stingy with your time. Next, listen to this, with your emotions. Stop lying to yourself, you feel. Fives, listen to me, fives feel. We now know because of science, listen to me, it is impossible for any human being to have a thought that is detached from emotion. They feel, they just don't show it. And you know why, listen to me, friends, because we're not safe. We're not safe. So like when I have my outburst and I'm yelling, why don't you feel? That's safe. <laughs> That's inviting. Man, don't, didn't you all just feel this? I, I wanna pour my heart out to you right now. <laughs> They're stingy with their emotions. Listen to me, some of you were raised by a five and they loved you. They just didn't know how to say it. They loved you. And this is the thing that breaks my hearts. We appreciate their stability, but oftentimes we don't appreciate them. And they've worked hard to protect you, to provide the environment around you, and you reward them by asking them to be something they're not. They're stingy with their emotions when they become unhealthy. Next, listen to this, and, and listen to me fives, I love you, God loves you. But you're stingy with your knowledge. What, what's the point of you knowing everything if you don't ever share it? You're like, I went to a small group, it's full of idiots. Yeah, that's why you're supposed to go. So you can say, well, actually, the word of God says this. Actually, this is what Jesus said. You see, fives provide stability because they're not led by their emotions, they're led by their knowledge. And there's actually a place in scripture where we're to speak a word of knowledge to each other. And you don't say, hey, stupid people, listen to me. You say, hey friend, I appreciate your passion, but this is actually what God's word says. Because sometimes people quote scripture and it isn't scripture. 
And so you don't share what you know with us. You don't. Some of my friends who are doctors, who were high fives, I had to text them and ask them what they thought about the vaccine. I had to text them and ask them what they thought about the vaccine. I had to pry it out of them. The other doctors that aren't fives, they just bah, told me. But fives, isn't that amazing? Even in life and death situations, you don't share what you think. And you know why that is? Because you're like, it's not worth it. And I understand, <laughs> you know. I mean, every, every time I speak, I mean, you guys have no idea what is it. Who am I gonna offend today, the left, the right? You know, which group is gonna be upset? I mean, that's the world we live in. Everybody's offended, everybody's upset, and that's why fives pull back from us, because you're scary. I'm scary. Every day's Halloween for fives, they just look around at us. <laughs> they look at you and they see little Chucky. They're like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Listen to me, my friends who are fives. Some of you are stingy with your money. Listen to what the word of God says in 1 Corinthians. It says, so that your faith may not rest on the wisdom of men, but on the power of God. God wants, God wants to not have you so focused on your time, your emotions, your knowledge. He wants you to rest on the power of God. Here's why you should participate in church. Here's why you should be a part of church. We got a high five in my small group every week. It's nine o'clock, man. He turns into a pumpkin. <laughs> like if it's 9.05, his foot just starts, he just starts going, you know? I'm just warming up at nine o'clock, man. The Holy Spirit comes awake at nine, amen? I know I've been talking for an hour, but I just figured out what I thought. <laughs> Literally, my wife runs our small group. This is what she says. Okay, who has a feeling except for Matt? Sometimes a small group, my phone will go off and it says, stop sharing. I'm like, okay. okay. It's not the Holy Spirit, it's my wife. Yep, yep, yep. But she's right, she's right. Because if I talk, what do fives do? They just go, yeah, he's okay, I may have to find another church, okay. But listen to me, fives. Ephesians 3.10 says, so that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God might be made known to rulers and authorities in heavenly places. That's what God's called you to do, to reveal the manifold wisdom of God. One of my favorite fives is a guy by the name of William Lane Craig. I love watching him dice, dice atheists to pieces when it comes to the knowledge of God. There is no one like him. Brilliant is not is an understatement for him. But he has said, God, I'm going to give you my mind. I'm going to leverage my talents for the kingdom. And he goes into MIT. He goes into Harvard, into Yale, unapologetic, and he stands for the truth. And some of you parents who are raising little fives, maybe instead of being a doctor or a lawyer or a scientist, God wants them to be an apologist. Some of us as parents care more about the money that our kids make than the impact they make. The manifold wisdom of God is to come through the church. Listen to me, fives when healthy, the observer is to always be in pursuit of generosity. Look, I love you, but you tight, you know what I'm saying? You tight, you just, you, yeah, you know? You're like, oh, here comes the offering. No, no, that's in a little bit, just relax, <laughs> just relax. but you withhold your emotions, you withhold your time, and you are not generous with your finances. Let me tell you something, your wisdom came from God because God is generous and he blessed you with it. He blessed you with it. And some of you fives are robbing yourself of the joy of giving. Isn't it interesting though, that Jesus Christ has a one-on-one -on -one conversation at night, which by the way, I failed to mention this, the core struggle and underlying emotion of the five is fear. And isn't it interesting that Nicodemus came at night? He was afraid to ask these questions during the day, but Jesus still entertained him. Isn't that nice to know that Jesus accepts us where we are? Nicodemus came at night 
And as far as we know, during the life of Jesus Christ, he never became a believer. But isn't this interesting? A person who struggles with greed, when Jesus Christ dies, listen to this, John 19, 39 through 40. It says, with him came Nicodemus, the man who had come to Jesus at night. Listen to me, friends. He brought about 75 pounds of perfumed ointment made from myrrh and aloes following the Jewish burial custom. And they wrapped Jesus' body in the spices and in long sheets and linen cloths, extraordinarily expensive stuff. In today's market, I mean, I don't know what inflation is today, but between $75,000 and $100,000. And Nicodemus blessed our dead Lord with that offering. You see an unhealthy five would be like, well, he's dead, so who cares? But a five who's met Jesus cares, cares. One of my favorite fives in our church, I remember the first time I asked him personally to give money. I asked him personally. You would have thought I asked him to murder someone. He was sweating so bad through his shirt. I just started laughing. I said, look, man, if God doesn't tell you to give it, don't get it. Just don't, just don't do it. Because the Lord loves a hilarious giver. He doesn't want somebody that's compelled or forced. Any church that forces you to give is not God's church. But you know what I love about him, this guy? He's probably wondering right now if I'm talking about him, I am. <laughs> Listen to me, I've watched God change his life over the last couple years and he has become the biggest giver in our church's history. And that is not because of me, that is because of Jesus, and he touched the heart of a five. And let me tell you something, God wants to use you today. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Fives. What, 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 what's all that money and all that knowledge, all that wisdom worth if you hoard it for yourself? God gave it to you to be a blessing. And listen to me, fives, the only difference usually between a river and a lake is this, is that a lake is damned. It holds for itself. Don't be damned. Learn to be a giver. Learn to, as it comes to let it flow. So how can the observer be real with themselves? Listen to me, I love you. Get out of your head and in touch with your feelings. Don't ever ask a five what they're thinking. Ask them what they're feeling. Fives, you can trap yourselves in your brains. God gave you a brain, but you don't live in your brain. You live in the world. So you gotta make sure, how am I feeling? And I know feelings are scary. How can you be more real with others? Listen to me, Proverbs 18.1. Memorize this verse, never forget it. He who separates himself seeks his own desire and quarrels against all sound wisdom. Some of you fives, you think small group and community group is the enemy. Let me tell you something. It is God Almighty, and he wants to change your life. He wants to get you out of your head and into relationships and with people. When you isolate yourself, you seek your own desires. And let me just tell you something. Let me ask everybody in this room and everybody listening, is the world a better place because we've all been isolated for 18 months? People are going crazy. You see, they used to think that mental illness was the result of what was happening in your brain. Let me tell you what psychologists now know. Mental illness is the result of self-isolation. You see, God made us as social creatures. He made us to interact. Jesus has commanded you to interact for his purpose and for his kingdom. And some of you are like, well, I'm not smart, I'm not a five. Well, God knows you, and he loves you. He loves me. We're not the, the sharpest tool in the shed, but at least we're in the shed, amen? <laughs> it's good to be in the shed. James 1, 5, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God. Listen to me, fives, you know how God's gonna answer that prayer? He's gonna put you in that small group with that knucklehead. Because usually the way God answers prayer is through a person. God who gives generously to all without reproach and it will be given to him. How can the observer, how can you be real with God today? 2 Timothy 3, 7, don't be this, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. 
man, I don't just want you to observe Jesus today. I want you to know him. Do you know him? Do you know him? In just a minute, I'm going to give you an opportunity to know him. But before that, I want to challenge everybody else. If there's a five in your life, I want you to learn to love him. Here's the thing that breaks my heart. So many people that are critical of the Enneagram, here's what they believe, we're all the same. That is stupidity and foolishness. We are not all the same. And we need to learn to genuinely love one another. Here's how you love them. Acknowledge their need for personal space and time. You know what I did this week? You're not gonna believe me. I had dinner by myself. I went out to a restaurant. It was fabulous for about five minutes and I said, I'm never doing this again. All my fives were like, tell me more, pastor, tell me. Tell me more. <laughs> Just understand they're different. You know, I'm good by myself for about five minutes. I'm like, okay, let's talk. Who wants to talk? <laughs> Number two, would you express how much it means to you when they engage? You say, well, they never wanted to go to the party, but they came. So say, thank you. Thank you. Number three, don't criticize how they have fun, right? You go on vacation, they want to read everything historical. Oh my gosh, look at all these words. We got to read these. <laughs> Some of you are like, words? What are you talking about, words? That's just how it is. Number four, utilize their knowledge and wisdom. Ask them for information. Ask them what they think. God's blessed them. God's blessed them. But if you're a five today, and some of you say, well, pastor, I'd love to believe, but I just, I just have scientific, I have scientific problems. No, you don't. Listen to me. I love you. You have sin problems. Here's what science is at least now being honest. They don't know. For 100 years, they've been telling us they got to figure it out. They're now finally coming around and saying, yeah, we have no idea how this works. They have theories. God is not a theory. Listen to me, he's theos in the Greek. He's the unmoved mover and he loves you. And I know, listen to me, I know you say, well, I just don't know how I'm gonna understand God. Here's how God wants you to understand him. He sent his son, Jesus, who is the exact likeness of God in human flesh. You wanna know who God is? Look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. And Jesus said, whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Listen to me, friend, if you're, if you're ready to believe today, God loves you, here's how you get saved. Here's how you move from an observer to a believer. It starts with an apology. Every real relationship does. You've sinned against God. You've not used your giftedness. You've not used your wisdom for his glory. You've not been generous with it to other people. And you need to say today, God, I'm sorry. We're not all as smart as you but God does love you and you need to say, I'm sorry. And then you just need to say, and I believe today, I'm gonna stop making excuses with my mind and I'm gonna give you my heart. And so all I want you to do right now is I want you to bow your head and close your eyes and repeat after me. If you're ready to give your life to Christ, here's what I want you to do. I want you to raise your hand and you just say, Lord, I have my doubts but God, I wanna believe, help me to believe. God, creator of the heavens and earth, I invite you to be real with me right now in this moment. Fives, challenge God. God, if you're real, reveal yourself to me right now. And Holy Spirit, I ask that you reveal to them the truth of your son, Jesus Christ. Fives, listen to me, you can't get there with your head. You gotta come to Jesus with your heart. The Bible says, for it is with our mouth that we confess and it is with our heart that we believe. God, help them right now to get in touch with their hearts and just say, Jesus, I'm a sinner and I wanna be saved. I believe in your son, Jesus Christ, and right now I submit to him. If you raise your hand and you prayed those words, the wisdom behind everything that is now lives inside of you. Heavenly Father, bless them in the mighty, 
powerful name of Jesus. And I pray today that they wouldn't just think there's a God, but that they would know you personally. We pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. What an amazing message, especially for our observer friends and family. Whether you are an observer or not, if you prayed that prayer, I want to celebrate this moment with you. And isn't it awesome to know that, that all around the world there are people who gave their lives to Jesus just, just now, right now. If you are in the chat right now, just type in gave. If you are at that Sandals Church Anywhere location, tell your host and the people there that you gave. And for all of you, I love for you to let us know, let me know that you gave your life to Christ by going to sandalschurch.com slash next and click on follow Jesus. Let us know. Let me know that you gave your life to Christ. And now that you are born again into the family of God, I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, thank you so much for for these individuals, whoever they are, dear God, for that individual, and you see them right now, for them giving their life to Jesus, for them saying that I'm gonna choose faith over fear. So thank you so much for this moment. Lord, help them to be their real self in you. We thank you right now, dear God, for what you're gonna do as, as, as the Holy Spirit now lives in them. And we are praying for great things in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, praise God. You, you know, Pastor Matt challenged observers to get into a group. But there are more than just observers that are listening to me right now that are not in groups. Maybe, maybe it's you. You're not in a group yet. Being in community is not only what God intended, but it's what all human beings need. If you want to go further in life, and be in community with others, then we want to help you. Just go to sandalschurch.com slash groups and get into a group today. We will walk alongside you as you discover community. Well, I hope that you were encouraged today as we worship God with singing, heard a message from our lead pastor, Matt Brown, and, and learn what to do with the message that we heard. But right now, I wanna say something to those of you who are local to our campuses, who used to go to a campus and for whatever reason have decided not to come back to a campus, but you watch online. To you, I just wanna say thank you. Thank you so much for continuing to be a part of Sandals Church. Thank you so much for giving. Thank you for praying for us. And whenever you're ready, I, your campus staff, and your campus pastor will be so happy and honored that you came back to campus again. Can't wait to see you. Have a great week.